Okay, thank you uh, for talking to, to us today. It is a real pleasure. Uh, thank so, you for inviting me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Omberg, I, I just to I just like to ask you a few questions on the meaning, the sense of this Congress here in New York, ISPS. What's the meaning, what's the sense of having such a, a Congress here in the United States, in New York? Oh. Well, of course, I can't uh, talk on behalf of the ASPS board members because I'm just an ordinary member. Uh, for me, the meaning is rather clear. Um, I think these I yeah, ISPS people have always fought against the idea of a purely biological uh, psychiatry, but they were on a strong minority position. And now you can feel it. it, it mm, this the, the climate has changed, so to say. You know, there is an, something taking place which maybe could be a, a change of paradigm. So the biological, the merely biological approaches to mental disease uh, eventually have shown up to be not so adequ adequate. And so all the ideas about a social and a psychological, a psychotherapeutic approach are really uh, getting strength, uh, you know, and I think that's all about. And it's quite significant that yeah. this all taken place in the United States, which has been the home country of the biological psychiatry after having been the home country of psychoanalytic psychiatry in the 50s and, and 60s. You know, all the mainstream things, they start from the United States <laughs> or from English-speaking countries. And uh, uh, so you can feel here when things change. Mm -hmm. okay. um, what are your impressions in terms of where these psychiatrists stand now? Uh, because you, you just said that they have a knowledge that there's been a great failure in terms of, you know, focusing all their attention on biology and drugs. So, but where do they stand now? You mean the ISPS? Yeah. Uh, um, well, as I said before, I don't know their story that well. Um, I think they are standing on, on the position they always had, you know, that in order to change something in, uh, in the life of a person who has schizophrenia or severe psychosis, you have to build up a relationship and you have to look not only for the person himself but also for a social context and then of course you have to um, live an art of being in relationship with all the different types of possibilities which is cognitive behavior, psycho cognitive therapy, uh, psychodynamic uh, therapies and, and so on. And there is the problem. First of all, it's such a huge and divided universe, you know, yes, and so how to find something that is common to all, uh, all of these approaches. And the other thing is how can you prove that the clinical results are actually uh, as good and better as, um, uh, as, as a biological treatment. Actually, this has been proved, you know, there are a lot of research going on in this direction. But, you know, we still have to find a way of uh, proving, showing um, that the only thing that really can heal, if I may say so, is the capacity uh, of being relationship, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, um, the main topic of this Congress was, is um, understanding patients' experiences. Mm -hmm. So there's a sort of um, physician's humanity towards patients. Mm -hmm. But then I, I try and wonder, once pa physicians have understood patients' experience, then what's going on, mm -hmm. you know, how, which is next step? Uh, well, you, you're, you're asking this uh, someone who was uh, who grew up, <laughs> if I may say, he was trained uh, with a sentence in a, in, in a book, which is Fajoli's book, Death and Good Knowledge, uh, and, and the colleague writes at a certain point, I understand that the patient is telling me this and this. So what I, um, I want to say is, from our point of view, uh, this talking about understanding the patient is a little bit superficial or it's quite something that is self-evident. But if you only understand in, ter in, in terms of you feel, you, you care about, you consider the other person as a person, this is something that should be obvious. But if things 
remain at this level is just like a little bit like tender loving care and it um, is, is being in risk of becoming what we call assistenza in Italian. I don't know how you say this in English, you know, being it's taken it's care of uh, without a real idea of change. So it's really mm, very interesting and very precious what these mm, colleagues are talking about. But we think, if I may generalize, um, people from, from my approach, um, that understanding means to understand the uh, invisible, uh, non-conscious dynamics of the patient. For example, if you can understand that the person feels lonely uh, after weekend, it's not just I understand you're feeling lonely, don't, don't, don't behave like this, I'm with you, which doesn't change anything. It's you feel lonely because you have cancelled, you have annulled uh, our relationship. So, telling you this, I can kind of force you to re recover the relationship on an unconscious level and then you feel better. So I think understanding, in our view, must go deeper to an unconscious level or an unconscious level of understanding and that's there where really things change. And this is the theory that you are bringing here and you're sharing with these colleagues. Yes, we came to New York in order to uh, do some papers on uh, what is called the uh, uh, birth theory by Massimo Fagioli. That's the theory uh, I'm being trained of and we were a lot of uh, Italian <laughs> colleagues coming here and, and uh, it was nice to see and was that there's a lot of interest uh, for this kind of approach. Okay, mm. just a few things on your presentation here, just a few things. Oh yeah, well we're almost there, you know, and as, as the other colleagues did, I tried to uh, explain how do we see, first of all, mental violence. You see, understanding the patient is not just understanding that every patient had pos has possibilities which have to be respected and which have to grow. Every patient also had a lot of violence, which is a, mm, it's a psychic violence, which doesn't show up in behavior. So you have to know about this. And there is this idea of uh, uh, an almond drive that was uh, you know, described by Fagioli. And on the other hand, uh, uh, the next important, crucial point uh, is that every uh, human being, uh, when it uh, comes to birth, is a human being that's not um, mentally ill. So we strongly disagree with the Freudian concept of an unconscious, which is naturally, let's say, fragmented or psychotic, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's a completely different approach. That doesn't mean that we do miracles and we're able to heal uh, any psychotic patient we, we are dealing with. It's more about the idea that there has in every person been a starting point where things were uh, were okay and eventually this starting point can be recovered. You said that there was great interest around this discussion and actually we did interview another psychiatrist, an Italian psychiatrist, and he said that American psychiatrists are just looking for a theory. Now that they've got back to the human psychiatry, they're looking for, you know, where to go? Where do we go now? So they are looking for a theory. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of this? Well, in a naive way I'd say, great, here we are. Let's talk. Let's get together. You know, you have your experiences. We have a lot of theories, so we things could turn out. But we have to see, we have to see what happens. You know, there's this um, uh, beautiful thing that they're looking for something, yeah. which eventually we think uh, we have found already, <laughs> thanks mm -hmm. to the Fagioli years ago. But on the other hand, uh, this is the big country, mm -hmm. and the English-speaking culture is predominant, and we come from, the, from Italy, and so we have to see how to, how to make this majority-minority relationship. But if they are really curious, and if we are really able to, to tell our, uh, our things in a good way, well, eventually dialogue yeah. will break out. I mean, it's all about dialogue yeah. today, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think this is a great achievement indeed. So, what are the main things that you are taking back to Rome with you from this Congress? Oh, that's an easy and difficult question. Well, it's not, not, not over yet. Um, Maybe the, the feeling that all the people who work uh, with psychosis and all people who had psychosis or are having them and the family, they're really strongly looking for something. 
and as far as a therapist are concerned, we are all in a very heavy work. So there's a sort of common feeling between all of us. So that's something that gives me a sense of respect. And I hope uh, that will create a situation of, of talking and, and confronting and eventually also accepting uh, new contents. Okay. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure to talk to you today. So it was for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>